Okay, peeps, Dr. J here, and we're going to talk about the rock cyclone. So we have our three types of rocks. We have metamorphic rock, we have igneous rock, and we have sedimentary rock. So they're different in how they formed, not necessarily where they formed or how old they are, but where they formed, not where they formed, how they formed. So each one can become the other. So let's start here with igneous rock. We get igneous rocks when magma melts. So if I have an igneous rock and it gets really, really hot, it can melt, turn into magma. When that magma cools, it becomes an igneous rock. If it cools inside of the Earth's surface, it's called an intrusive igneous rock. If it forms outside, of the volcano or on the Earth's surface is considered an extrusive igneous rock. So igneous can turn into igneous. Then if we go from igneous to sedimentary, several things have to happen. The igneous rock has to be weathered and eroded. This can be from rain, it can be from the wind, you name it. Anything that's going to break down the rock into smaller and smaller pieces. So then we get what's called sediment. Sediment is small pieces of rock that has been weathered and eroded. So to make a sedimentary rock it first has to be weathered and erosion has to occur. Erosion is when the sediment is picked up and moved to another place. Weathering is the actual breakdown of that rock. So then we have the sediments, and two, th two things have to happen to those sediments over a very long period of time to make a sedimentary rock. The sediment has to be squeezed really hard, and then with that squeezing, it becomes compressed so hard that it becomes cemented together or glued together. So this might be because there's a lot of sediment on top of it, like at the bottom of the ocean. It might be that there's a bunch of sediment on a beach and then a lava flow comes over it and then another lava flow. And so most of the time, you have this compacting and cementing over a long, long time. This is where we can find fossils. And so that sedimentary rock gets formed. So again, we went from igneous, it got weathered, Erosion picked up the little pieces called sediment. They were pushed really hard, smashed really hard into where they were glued together. So then a sedimentary rock can go back in and be another sedimentary rock. And that would happen again by it being weathered, broken down, and then eroded, which means those little pieces get picked up and taken away. So for a sedimentary rock to turn into a metamorphic rock, what has to happen is it has to go under extreme heat and pressure. The key word here is extreme. It's just not going to melt just because we put it on the frying pan or it's hanging out next to hot springs. It's extreme heat and pressure close to underneath the mantle where those convection currents occur. So we have that sedimentary rock. It melts and all the little neat and groovy elements go and arrange themselves in a different way and it becomes a metamorphic rock. So in this, the form of the rock has changed. So it can be twisted, it can be bent, and it becomes this metamorphic rock. And metamorphic rocks can become sedimentary rocks and they can become igneous rocks. And they can melt and make magma. Now, these rocks are classified separately in each group. So an igneous rock can be coarse-grained or fine-grained, meaning coarse-grained means you can see all the little pieces in it. So like granite, if you look at a granite countertop, you can see the little pieces of brown and black and shimmering. Those are coarse-grained. Versus fine-grained would be like obsidian or something where you couldn't see the difference between the grains. You'd have to get a microscope. You couldn't see them with your naked eye. So igneous rocks coarse-grained or fine-grained. Metamorphic rocks. Since the rocks are being squished under heat and pressure, they're either going to be pushed into stripes in which the minerals in there just melt and line up in a line. That's called foliated. A foil means a layer. 
So foliated rocks have stripes. And the opposite of that one is non-foliated, which means it has shade, changed its shape and form, and, but it's not in stripes. And then we go to sedimentary rocks, and you have clastic, which means they're made up of little bitty pieces of other stuff. So an example of a clastic rock that's sedimentary, oh, I'd have to think really hard. I don't have any common ones that you'd recognize. But clastic meaning it's all pieces of everything else that's been glued together. You have organic, which means it's dead things all smushed together. So like um, a whole bunch of seashells pushed together to make a sedimentary rock. Chalk is actually the remains of seashells. And remember if we put um, hydrochloric acid on top of it, it would bubble up because it has carbonate. So that is your rock cycle in a nutshell.